Hi, and welcome to a screencast that I'm going to be doing. It's going to be a three-part series. Uh, part one, this one, is going to talk a little bit about UV mapping. I've gotten a lot of interest from some of the other screencasts I've been doing that focus on UV mapping, and a few people even asking me, you know, what is UV mapping? I'm seeing these screencasts, and it looks really interesting, but could you tell me a little bit more about it? So for beginners, UV mapping is not really something that uh, that is used a lot. Here I have a cube, and you know most most beginners in 3D programs will just create a new material, like uh, give it a color and start to play with things like reflection and bump mapping, not really giving much thought to how the texture is being applied to the object, and that's really what UV mapping. Uh, is all about. So the U and V are sort of placeholders for X and Y. We're already using XYZ coordinate system for the world space of our object here, um, corresponding to our RGB for XYZ. And UVW is uh, UVW XYZ. So UVW is the coordinate system that we use when you flatten an object for the purposes of texturing it. So what do I mean by flatten an object? So this cube is clearly three-dimensional. However, if we were to look at the UV view of it, and we can go to the uh, body paint UV edit layout, and we see we have this panel over here, that is the UV panel. So if we say show UV mesh, we actually see a faint black line. Now, what we're seeing here is we're seeing the flat uh, UV space, horizontal, vertical, mapping to this cube. So to simplify things, uh, by default, Cinema 4D has a, sort of a, um, what's the best way to say this? It has a, a default mapping for most of its primitive objects. So the cube, each face of the cube, gets mapped to the UV coordinates of the square. So I'm going to create a new material. I'm just going to uh, create a new material and I'm going to import a, you know like a sample image to the color channel. Okay so uh, I hope too much of it isn't being cut off by my uh, on my screen here, but here we have an image, and if I apply this image to the cube, this texture, you can see that uh, it, it maps corresponding to each face of the cube. So this cube comes with a UV map already, and what we can actually do is select one of the UV faces, so if we go to the UV polygons tool, uh, whoops, my cube is actually still a parametric object, so I need to convert it to an editable object with the C keyboard shortcut. And then I can select one of the faces, this one right here, switch to my UV polygons mode and it highlights over here. So I can then scale this face down and if I load the texture that I'm using into memory, load textures, I can grab it from this menu right here and we can actually see what this face is going to have on it. So if I were to scale this face down, so it just has that shadow behind this rock formation, we see that that's all you see on this face of the cube. Likewise, I can select this face of the cube over here, and you can see now I'm moving it around, and I can scale it down so that it just shows the sky. So in this sort of abstract example, we can see that using UV mapping I've basically changed what each face of the cube is showing. Now that's one way to explain it, but another way to explain how UV mapping affects your uh, affects your geometry is uh, by actually unfolding this cube. So what I have here is an editable cube. I'm just going to delete the textures. And 
let's just uh, disconnect all the faces. So I'm just going to use the disconnect command and uncheck preserve groups. So now each face is its own object. So when you UV map a cube, you usually want to do something like this. Like if I were to go from the side view and rotate the face 90 degrees and then line it up here. And then I take this face over here and I rotate it 90 degrees. Keep in mind, this is just an example. This isn't actually how you do UV mapping. I'm, I'm just trying to get the concept across. Continue to rotate these faces out and we're sort of flattening the cube. And I think, I think you're getting the point by now, which is that you can flatten an object like this cube and lay out all of its faces kind of like that so that you can paint on all of them. So obviously physically manipulating the cube like this is not the answer, but there are other ways to do it. I'm just going to undo until I get back to before I disconnected the cube. So it's, it's all one object again. And here's how we can do it. For instance, we can select these three faces right here. We can apply a material to uh, me undo back until I have that material back. I just realized I want I, I still want to use it. So I'm going to delete the UV tag. That's where the UV info is stored. And so I just have this texture applied here. And because it's using UV mapping and the texture tag, it just shows up as an orange shade, sort of an average color. But if we change this to flat mapping, for instance, we can see that the texture is being applied here to the front of the cube. And it's, you're just getting this banding and the striping going back. So we want to apply it to the top and the two outside faces of the cube right here. Uh, let me make sure I have those selected. So what we can do is choose a projection that sort of describes what we want. So in this case, I'm going to go with cylindrical projection and I'm just going to rotate, rotate my projection into place and scale it up a little bit so we can see. And we have the texture sort of wrapping around the cube in the way that we want. So now that we have that, I can basically say, and I'm going to do this kind of quickly, assign UV coordinates, and then I can select the other faces. I just use the invert command. Assigning UV coordinates, changed it to UV mapping, and I can change it back to cylindrical mapping. But this time I would like to map the other three faces. So I'm just going to rotate this projection. So we're now looking at the uh, underside of the cube. I'm going to move the seam up here to the top. This is all just sort of stuff that I'm speeding through. I just I just want to get the concept down. And then with these other faces selected, I can say assign UV coordinates again. And you see that the UV coordinates we assigned the first time snap back into place because assigning UV coordinates basically changes this back to a UV mapping projection. So now that we have this all UV mapped, all six faces, we can go back to the UV edit view and we can actually see the six faces here. So if I select the three top faces, these three guys on top, and then I go to my UV polygons mode, I can see them right here. I can scale them down a little bit, put them over to the side. And then I can select these other three, scale them down a little bit, put them over to the side. And one of the cool things is Cinema 4D and a lot of other programs allow you to automatically relax and unwrap these UVs. So obviously these aren't the right size. They're, they're rectangular instead of square. And what we can do is select all of these faces and then we can go to our relax UV tab. And we can say, um, we don't want to pin any of the points. We just want to relax it. And so what we have here is sort of a uh, relaxed version of these cubes. And then we can sort of use the automatic align feature to select all the faces and sort of realign them. 
So here we have a really crude example of an unfolded cube. What I mean by unfolded is that all of these UV polygons, I'm just trying to rotate this into place. I'm sort of trying to work while explaining this. So all of these UV polygons are now uh, sort of sharing the same texture space without overlapping on each other. And that allows us to do some really cool things like paint on all sides of the cube. And so this is how UV mapping works. It's basically taking one object and unwrapping it so that you can paint flat on it. Uh, if I were to load that material into RAM again, you see here it sharpens up in the preview. What we can actually do is see this relationship happen in real time. If we take the paintbrush tool and we go to our canvas here, we can actually uh, we can actually paint on the object and we can see that as we paint across these three polygons, we've actually painted a line across the area that we UV mapped. And then as we paint across these three polygons here, we're painting a line across the area we UV mapped in the other direction. So this is a pretty abstract example, but I hope that if you had any question about what UV mapping is, this helps sort of explain it. It's a way to stick the textures that you're dealing with onto an object after unfolding the geometry of the object so that it actually um, it actually lays flat so that you can then paint on this or apply a texture or some sort of a pre-made uh, material and sort of deal with it on a, on a flat space in the UV space instead of in 3D space or instead of using cubic mapping or cylindrical mapping or flat mapping, one of the other mapping methods. In the next video, I'd like to show a bit of a practical demo. I might take one of the parts from one of the uh, other projects I'm working on and we can UV map it. And um, I'll just show you guys some practical techniques about how and why you would actually want to UV map an object in a certain way. So, uh, you know, if this UV mapping stuff is new to you, stay tuned. And if this video was a bore and you already knew this stuff, thanks for watching. But the next part should have some more interesting content. So uh, thanks for watching and until next time, see ya.